All right, everyone. I am finally back in the Netherlands. I've been uh, I've been away in Australia for three goddamn months, but you know the, the trip has to come to an end eventually. So uh, here I am. Uh, I did uh, fully complete for Spoken today. So uh, yeah, it hasn't been great so far. Um, before I left Australia, I made a little video about a, a publisher called Game Mill Entertainment, and I basically just kind of ranted about them like rushing out like really really bad games. Well, today. I am happy to announce that I found something even worse than Game Mill Entertainment. It is a really small little company and it's called Ubisoft. Oh, oh I love Ubisoft. The amount of times I've ranted in disgust about this company should be like in a in a museum. That, that's how often I've done it. And the, the game I really want to focus on in this video is a pirate game called Skull and Bones. This is one of those types. Idols, I don't even want to play. I'm usually pretty lenient when it comes to video games. I mean, I've played a lot of bad games and I continuously try to play them. So I have like a contrast on what is good and bad. But sometimes a game is so utterly crap that I just I just refuse to play it. And Skull and Bones is one of those games. I look at this and all I see is just a pile of guck, a pile of mucus. So uh, let me explain to you what has been like going on in the last decade. Um, yeah, this game has been in development hell for the longest time. Uh, let me start off with what Skull and Bones is. It is a pirate sailing game. Uh, the game is based off on uh, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, which I haven't played this title, but a lot of people really, really like this game. And they say that it is the best Assassin's Creed game because of like the pirating stuff and I know that a lot of people have been asking for a good quality like PvP pirate game. The closest we ever got to that is Sea of Thieves and Sea of Thieves is just an, 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 a whole nother can of worms. So this game started development in 2013 and it was revealed in 2017. Originally it was set to be released in 2018 but then it got delayed to 2019 and then it got delayed to 2021 and then to 2022 November 8th one day before God of War or Ragnarok and guess what that was delayed again into 2023 and now it got delayed again into 2024 this game is such a gigantic disaster and it's just it's just a complete mess and the reason for all of these delays is really really simple everything they showed in like the last five or so years it, it just didn't look very good it looks by the books uh, the best way I would describe this game is it, it looks like a title made by the higher ops made by the suits it's generic it's it's lame it's it's it looks like crap and for a game that has been in development for 10, 10 goddamn years. This is just, it's mind, it's mind boggling, like honestly. The biggest problem with this game is that it has fallen into the pit of life service, the, the life service rabbit hole. And Ubisoft in general has had a lot of problems with this. Uh, like all of their games fall into this trap. Uh, Far Cry XD Defiant, which I thought was cancelled, but it isn't. And people seem sort of excited about this. But still, th this game has been delayed so many times. Assassin's Creed recently had Mirage, which isn't as bloated, but again, it's just really by the books and kind of whatever, unless if you're like an Assassin's Creed fan. Even the Mario Rabbit game, uh, Mario plus Rabbit uh, Sparks of Rope, they, they didn't just make the game, they also had to include it with a bunch of D DLC. Ubisoft is a company that just needs to turn every single game into a live service. And now with Skull and Bones, it, they just have taken it way, way, way too far. This game is a live service nightmare. They are just so focused on trying to get people hooked instead of making like, like, like a really fun pirate game where you work together and try to like raid each other. Every aspect is focused on the grind. It, that's how I like to call it at least. On like resource gathering and like going through shops with really buy the books menus and like you can buy like XP multipliers. You slowly upgrade your ship so you can do it all over again but with better quote unquote.
quote-unquote stats. One thing that really bothers me about uh, Skull and Bones is that you aren't really playing as a, a guy on a ship. You play as the entire ship. In my eyes, the appeal of like a pirate game is that you are just like a small little little bozo on this big ship and you're trying to help and to fight the enemy as a team. I mean, I've played a couple of like really bad Roblox pirate games and I thought that was always the fun part, like working together to take the enemy down. But in Skull and Bones, you play as like one big conglomerate and it's just, it's just so whatever. And still, to this day, I haven't seen one person be super excited about this game. It is either whatever, I don't really care, or they are saying like, this game looks like complete other crap. When I imagine a pirate game, uh, the thing I always think about is uh, the, the video game Donkey Clip, where he's uh, drinking tea on a boat and he's just like making a bunch of like silly jokes while being like raided, while, while he's being attacked. Like honestly, I get why people would like a really polished the game like this it looks fun it's chaotic having to protect your ship from a raid or from sinking while working together but in skull and bones you go to islands and chop trees while you're on the ship and then you have like weird battles where you once again you, you play as the entire ship and not as like a little guy on the ship which in my opinion is the whole appeal of a pirate game and on one side honestly i feel kind of bad for the all the people that are working on this like ubisoft pump so much money into this that they are trying to make some sort of return on it you know like 10 years of development is a lot in comparison uh, Baldur's Gate 3 uh, took nine years and that game is big that game is really really goddamn big and if you compare that to skull and bones it is just really really sad skull and bones looks like a like a crying baby in comparison and Baldur's gate 3 is like a nuclear bomb yeah uh, i don't know man ubisoft is a weird weird ass company they have a total of 21,000 employees and they create like mediocre crap i i don't get it in the slightest they also like they are really weird with their steam releases by not including achievements and having to use you play they, they are weird man they are really really weird and uh, skull and bones is their next little little weird little hiccup they could have have like an immensely successful game if they just got assassin's creed and focus more on the pirate side of it but you know the suits wanted money started directing the game and those people usually don't know how to make a good game in the slightest so you get like me Mediocre crap like Skull and Bones. It's a shame. It straight up is. So yeah, um, that's all I really wanted to babble about. A st really strange situation. I'm telling you right now, okay. Um, yeah, th this game is not gonna perform well in the slightest, I think. But, you know, I, I love to be proven wrong. Maybe, maybe Ubisoft has like a gold mine on their fingertip. And they are trying to like fine tune every little aspect, every little corner of it. But at the same time, you also have uh, Beyond Good and Evil. And that game has also just been in complete disarray. So yeah, um, I don't know. Uh, let me know what you guys uh, think down below. Uh, I'm going back to my streak of completing really bad games for my big main channel video. So uh, please wish me luck because the next game on this on my list is... Uh, uh, yeah, um, if you want to support me, you can get some gamer subs. Uh, use code POCO for 10% off. It's very tasty. And yeah, um, th th that's all I want to say. All right, take care, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>